Hello and welcome back. Today, at your request, we are going to do a self-massage for runner's knee. Runner's knee is basically a sort of umbrella diagnosis. It really just means pain in the knee but it can be caused by so many different conditions. So do get a diagnosis and clearance from your doctor before you do this massage, just to rule out anything that might be more serious, or if you have a lot of inflammation, you'll wanna wait till that lessens before doing this massage. So have a comfortable seat. If you have a lot of hair on your legs, you might wanna use just a little bit of lotion, not too much. You don't wanna be slipping and sliding over the skin. We're gonna do some myofascial release, which means we really wanna engage the tissue. So just a little bit, or if your legs are just very dry, you can use just a tiny bit of lotion. So just start by warming up. We're gonna do a lot of work on the quads today because that's the main muscle group that acts on the knee, so that's definitely very affected by knee conditions and could be a cause. So just some brisk rubbing, just warming it up, getting it ready to be worked on. You can go below the knee a bit. You can jostle. And then starting up at the hip crease, you'll put your palms together on top and you'll lean in with your body weight and spread the tissue out to either side. So I'm leaning in and my hands are coming apart, my palms are coming apart. So I'm leaning in, body weight, and just letting my hands spread just under the weight of my body, not pushing it. Move down a segment and we'll just work our way down towards the knee, warming it up relaxing, using as much pressure as feels comfortable to you. If it's a little sore or tender, that's okay. You want it to be really tolerable. No pain here. If it is too much or it's making you cringe or say, ouch, back off, lessen the pressure. So really bring it all the way down to the knee. Don't leave any parts out. And then right there on the top of the knee, if you need to, go a little more gently here. Excellent. We'll do a myofascial release. I really love using the broad surface of my forearm, so you can do that here too. Just get up there in that hip crease again, and you'll just be leaning your body weight. Try not to round your back like this. You want to sit up nice and tall and hinge from the hips. So leaning your body weight and that's going to feel so much better, not just for your upper body, but on the quads. Leaning in and just doing a myofascial release, going down, releasing the tissue, not pushing, not forcing, just moving as the tissue relaxes all the way down. So we're right in the center of the quadriceps right now, right on rectus femoris, which is the, the quadricep that runs down right the front. And we're just releasing that. And go at your own pace, but remember to breathe in through the nose, out through the nose. Nice deep breaths. You have to keep that oxygen flowing, especially while you're doing self-massage to really relax everything, get oxygen, get nutrients to all the places it needs to be. So go ahead inside. We'll do the inner quadricep or vastus medialis. And we're just gonna, again, this one's a little more awkward. If you want, you can bring your leg up and do it this way or you can just have it down and do it this way. And you'll see this on my adductors video too. I do an adductor self-massage for the inside of the leg. And then going on the outside. So vastus lateralis, the outside quad, leaning your body weight, straight back, tall spine, and just hanging out. If my leg wasn't here, I'd fall over. <laughs> 
So I'm just very relaxed, shoulders relaxed, arms relaxed, and just leaning and breathing. Hmm. If you want some deeper pressure, we can use knuckles, soft fists, not digging in, but just soft fists, and go down that way. So lean on in, and if you would like to add a little more intensity or just bring the nervous system into it in a more active way, you can begin to extend the knee and flex the knee really slowly, little movements, and only as much as is comfortable for you. Don't go past your pain point. Back off before it. And you can do the same thing with, sit back a little so I can lift my foot. You can do the same thing with the forearm. Two, extend and flex, and you could do it on all sides. So just experiment with that. If there's a point that feels particularly tender to you, you can hang out there. Just apply the right amount of pressure for you and breathe into it. This feels really nice. You can even do both sides at the same time. So getting on either side, inside and outside, and just do it that way. Extending and slowly flexing. As you flex, it's going to stretch. As you extend, it contracts. And now let's take it to the knee. Whole reason we're here, right? So again, I'm using those palms together and I'm just massaging. I'm just leaning, spreading, going on either sides of the knee, leaning and spreading below. And see how I'm still using my body, even though it's quicker. I'm just leaning with my body weight, spreading out. You can do some circles. This feels really, really nice. So I've got flat hands here now, and I'm just using my palms on either side, going down and up the knee. Again, looking out for any super tender points. You wanna go real light there, or not at all if it's very, very acute. And we'll start right up, right above the patella. So that's the knee bone, the kneecap. If you feel it hard, and then soft tissue. So coming off the bone and you'll feel it's softer and you could kind of lean your fingers into the tissue right at the top. That's your patellar tendon. It goes through into the bottom as well. So just start making some little circles. Massaging any which way. It might be a little tender. Take a nice breath. Release any tension. And when that feels good, you can bring your fingers out and we'll go all the way around that kneecap, all the way around the patella. So I'm just gonna do circles here, but um, you know, it's freestyle. <laughs> as long as you're massaging the area and it feels good, you're doing it right. Don't worry too much about the technique. It's it's all about you finding what works for you. And when you get down here, you get that big ropey tendon again, and just give that some extra love. Just doing some little circles. Hmm. And let's put our fingers on that tendon, and like we did before, We'll spread it out. This time we're gonna be leaning back though, cause we're coming up. So fingers on that patellar tendon right under the kneecap, flat fingers and just lean back so that you're doing a release around the knee. Goes nice and slow. Breathe while you do it, don't hold your breath. 
in through the nose, out through the nose, and all the way to the top. Let's go the other way, just for fun. <laughs> so putting your fingers up, and now we're on top of the kneecap, above the kneecap, and now we're leaning and going around, making a nice circle through all that knee tissue, the retinaculum. I didn't mean to use a big fancy word, never mind. The knee tissue, we'll just go with that. <laughs> You're like, retinaculum. <laughs> You get vocabulary here too, word of the day. Please use it in a sentence. <laughs> so then go on either sides of the knee and just do some circles here. Now, very often one side is gonna be super tender, so take it easy. If it's too much to do both sides at a time, just circle one side at a time. If you find a good spot, just hold it and breathe. Keep that pressure steady. You can even do a little movement if you want. So holding that spot on the knee, you can turn your leg out and turn it in. You can try that extension and flexion, just sort of experiment. See how that movement feels, see what makes it feel better, what makes it feel more tender. All of this is great information you can use this to help treat yourself. Empowering, isn't it? Pretty great. So I'm doing the inside here, go easy. It's a delicate area. You can do both at the same time, if you like. Let's really get under that knee too. Don't leave that part out, this whole bottom part. And when that feels good, just some nice big palm pressure again. Broad, spreading. Don't go on the patella, the kneecap right there. You don't want to push into that. Go on either side, either side above or below. You don't want to push on bone. That's not comfortable. And it wouldn't be complete if we didn't include the hamstrings because they also act on the knee. They flex it. So take your fingers underneath, you're gonna feel big ropey tendons there. We're going to spread this way. We'll use our fingers, four on each hand, and spread out. So we're gonna lean in, and then to spread it out, we're just gonna lean back. Coming away from those tendons, and all the way up the sides. I hope you can see it on my chicken legs. I always have very skinny legs. <laughs> Sorry about that. So lean forward and coming up around. Now you noticed I moved up a little bit. We're slowly moving from the knee crease up towards the rear end, your sit bone. There you go. And then the next segment, Lean and lean back. No effort here. I'm just letting it take me. Nice and relaxed. Keep that spine straight. Whether you're leaning forward or leaning back, you want that spine straight and you just want to be hinging at the hips. That's where the movement's coming from. Posture is really important with knee pain. You have to look at the alignment of your feet, your ankle, your knees, your hips, it all goes together. So in order to really take care of runner's knee, you need to figure out what the root cause is. Is it a misalignment? Is it that you are running too much or working out too much or just a lot of impact maybe, or you don't warm up before you work out or cool down enough? anything like that. If you sit with your knees bent or your knees crossed for really long periods of time, that could do it. Take a nice broad pressure. So we're just going to grab underneath. We're just going to grab those hamstrings right at the knee crease and then just go ahead, lean back oh, and enjoy that nice release. Feels so good. Oh, those hamstrings get so tight, right? 
and breathing. On the exhales, relax even more, lean back a little more, feel the tissue soften. And try to get all the way up to the sit bone. And then of course we'll add some active movement. You might wanna to come to the edge of the chair so you can get farther up there. So let's do that again, grabbing this way, like cradling, right? And then you can flex the knee and now nice and slow, cause it's gonna stretch the hamstrings, nice and slow. You can extend the knee and if you want even more stretch than that and only if it's comfortable, you can go ahead and flex the foot up towards your face. Let the foot go, slowly flex. You'll feel it shorten and then lengthen, go real slow. Flex. And if this is too much, just don't even do the movement. Just do it the way we did it at first. Just myofascial release coming up, no movement. One more stretch. Really nice. Let's jostle, shake it all out. Like we did at the beginning. Get everywhere. Get the quads, get the IT band, get the hamstrings, the knee. You can even go ahead and get the calf a little here if you want. That doesn't hurt. Also crosses the knee joint. Brush it off. and I hope that has helped your knee pain. You can do it regularly to take care of pain or even as a preventative. If you find yourself on your feet a lot, if you do a lot of running or high impact um, aerobics or working out or sports, then you probably wanna do this as a nice preventative so that you don't develop runner's knee or if you already have it so that it doesn't come back in the future. So if you like this video, if your knee and your leg are feeling good and warm and yummy like mine, give me a like and comment below. Let me know how this worked for you. Subscribe, I have a lot more coming out and click the notifications bell so you don't miss out. Thanks so much.